December is a month with some fairly significant life event dates in it, and I'll talk about those and a funny conversation I had at the Vampire Weekend concert that Liz and I went to last week. All coming up in this episode of the I Can't See You podcast. From Studio C, welcome to the I Can't See You podcast with David. He can't see, but he's got a lot to say and a face for radio. Hello there, and welcome to episode 52 of the I Can't See You podcast. My name is David, at David Benj on all the socials, and I really appreciate you listening today. As I mentioned in the intro, December has a lot of significant dates for me uh, in my life. Several eye surgeries, um, and the one that's most important uh, probably is the one that happened 11 years ago on December 8th, uh, just a few days ago. Um, It was the anniversary. I got, I had a transplant, which um, wasn't a full cornea transplant. It was just the endothelia, which is the, an inside layer of the cornea. You know, they take it out of the donor tissue, put a little hole in my eye, shove it in there, unpack it, you know, spread it out, open it up. And um, somehow it adheres to the other cornea and makes things all better or as best as they could be. It's significant this year because even though it's... uh, the surgery was 11 years ago. This year, sometime in this year, that tissue, that donor tissue turned 80 years old. So I'm 25 years younger than the donor tissue. And um, usually we celebrate with two cakes. You know, I get one on my birthday, which was back in November, and then I get another one uh, on December 8th. This year, I didn't get any birthday cakes. And we thought <laughs> we thought about getting a cake um, on the 8th of December, but by that point, it wasn't the cake I wanted, so we let it go, and quite frankly, I don't think I had the calories for it. Um, December 9th is a significant date because it was the date uh, going back 10 years ago um, that uh, my doctor had told me to lose weight, and I lost. uh, That was the beginning of uh, a journey that took me uh, and dropped me about 75 pounds. Uh, I won't talk about how I've gained around 10 pounds over the last year or so uh, from some changes in medicine. I'm still significantly lighter, probably about 65 or so pounds lighter, maybe 70, uh, depending, because I actually did lose a little more than 75 uh, when all was said and done. Uh, Then on December 10th, just a couple of days ago, when I, from the time I'm recording this, um, was the uh, 42nd anniversary of my bar mitzvah. And, and I was actually out at my mom's. Actually, it was yesterday, because today is the 11th when I'm recording. Uh, and um, I was visiting with my mom, and it was, a, it was a pretty good day for her yesterday. It didn't start out good. And, and quite frankly, it's, it's, it's very sad. She's, she's you know, very close to, uh, as the hospice nurse today told me, she um, you know, maybe has, at best, a week uh, left to live. And what some of the aides have told me, um, you know, once they start to not talk very much and, you know, she can, she stopped eating and, and things like that. So, so that part is sad, but yesterday, even though it started out bad for her, where her oxygen levels were really low, when I got out there, uh, there were a couple of people in the room with her, a couple of her favorite aides were there. One of them, it was the, her day off and she came in. Her name is June and Jen was on. So the two of them were in there when I got there and, and, um, you know, and they told me about the issues that she was having. But, you know, when I told her, you know, I asked her, I said, do you know what, you know, what today's anniversary date is? And, and she, you know, she said, what was the date? And I told her it was the 10th of December and she couldn't think she tried hard And then I told her and she's like, oh, yeah. And she had a smile on her face. And, you know, she thought back to the uh, uh, to the anniversary of uh, my, you know, thought back to my bar mitzvah back in uh, 1977, which I guess for a for a a Jewish um, kid at 13, it it is a very significant thing. Uh, Unfortunately, in my father's eyes and maybe my mom's, too. I'm not very religious, so <laughs> so it's not. Um, while I remember it fondly because all my aunts and uncles were there, and my cousins, and and so forth, and and that part was great, and it was a it was a great party, and it, I put in a lot of hard work for that. Um, partially because I had trouble seeing to read what I had to read in Hebrew, and and to be honest, I I couldn't read Hebrew today. A- again, partially because I can't see it, and partially because you know I haven't tried it, and in so long. And, and one of the things that, um, when someone who is Jewish dies, you say this thing called the mourner's cottage, which I don't know. And, um, 
I'm not going to be able to say it at my mom's funeral um, when it happens. So I, I didn't, I didn't say it at my dad's either. And I, I kind of felt more bad about that than, than, than with my mom, because um, as we'll talk about in a future episode, my mom, um, though she seemed very Jewish, uh, was born Catholic and, and converted uh, for my dad. Um, there's not too many people named Hernandez that are Jewish, I don't think. Um, so, uh, you know, so my mom got a great kick out of that. And it was nice yesterday visiting with my mom because there was a lot of activity in her room. There were people coming in to, to visit with her and talk with her. <clears throat> and, um, you know, she really had, she was on the ball as one of the, uh, one of the people there, her name is Hazel. Um, maybe the only Jamaican that likes country music. Um, she said, wow, she's so full of life today. And, um, you know, and today when I went to visit her was, was the exact opposite. Uh, and it was sad because she, like I said, she wasn't really saying much and, um, and, uh, you know, she was in, she's, she's just in such a great deal of pain. It's, it's so difficult to watch and they keep upping her meds. Um, she's on a fentanyl patch, uh, and she's been, and, um, and I do apologize for my voice. I have some sort of, uh, cold or something, I guess. Um, but you know, with, with December, you know, just to move forward with that, you know, a, a lot of other dates, um, and sadly, you know, more likely than not, you know, my mom's death is going to be in, in there. Um, uh, but a couple of years ago I had, uh, had surgery to repair a, uh, detached retina, the worst surgery I've ever had, uh, most painful, most difficult to recover from. Um, so if you have to have that, I'm, I'm sorry because it just sucked. It really, it really just sucked. Um, bed rest for a week. Um, you know, you gotta lay a specific way depending on where the gas bubble has to go. I had to lay on my side. I've heard from friends where they knew people that had to lay on their stomach and, um, and, and you have to do that for, you know, I had to do it 22 hours a day, um, for a week. And then when I did get up, I felt like I was on a boat, you know, in uh, 20 foot seas. Um, you know, I felt like I, I couldn't even walk straight. I was holding on to everything. And so that's another significant, um, anniversary in, in, uh, December, uh, Early in December, going back to 1986, I, I opened a West Coast video franchise in Brookhaven. And, and um, as I've mentioned before, just what a great business that was. Um, not necessarily for profits, but it was fun. Everybody's talking about movies. Um, you know, it was just a, um, for the, the core of employees that I had throughout the uh, 13 years that we were open, uh, just were just outstanding. I'm still friends with a lot of them. And it was just a nice business to have, um, you know, and there's not something like that now, I don't think, um, you know, because you, you, you know, obviously you get your movies now from, you know, on demand or Netflix or Hulu or Disney plus or whatever. Um, so, uh, you know, so that, that day has come and gone, I think for, uh, going out and renting a movie and, and, you know, let's face it, it's, it's kind of silly when you think about it. You had to go to the store and you get something, you pick it up and then you put it in your car and you drive it home. Then you go and you watch it and then you put it back in your car and then you drive it back to the store. Um, you know, now you, you go to a certain channel and you push a couple of buttons and boom, there it is. And, um, and you've rented the, the movie and, um, you know, the quality is much better. You don't have any issues with, um, <laughs> with uh, tracking, um, you don't have any issues with the people leaving the videotapes in the car and the melting, and and we have some good stories with that. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, someone had posted in um, we're in Delaware County, Pennsylvania. Someone had posted in a Delaware County group uh, a West Coast video sleeve with a videotape inside, and it turns out they actually rented from my store, and a couple of my friends had. Uh, shared that on my, on my Facebook uh, timeline, which I thought was pretty cool, but th that was just such a fun business. And, uh, I, I enjoyed it and I, I enjoyed it at the time, but I didn't know how great it was until years later, looking back at the different other businesses that I've had. And, you know, again, I don't know that you can have a business like that today, first of all, because most of the people that work there, in, including myself, we were all very young. Um, I opened it, I was 21 years old. Uh, a lot of the people that work there, 
um, were my age or younger. And it's funny because we had uh, an older gentleman who had uh, retired from his job and he would work a few days a week, mostly during the day. And people would come in to solicit for ads in a newspaper or whatever. And they would immediately see the two of us behind the counter and immediately go to him because they say, do we go to the kid or do we go to the old guy? And they would go to the old guy and he would take whatever paraphernalia they were putting in front of him and just slide it down the counter in front of me and, you know, say, he's the one you want to speak to. Um, and, and that was a lot of fun. And, um, and, and he was a great guy. His name was Bob. And, um, he went to uh, the thing that I didn't like. He went to Florida every winter, um, you know, for an, an extended amount of time. He would go see um, the Phillies in spring training and see games there and see them practice and, and so forth. And uh, it was just a, it was just a lot of fun. And one of his kids actually was uh, had gone to school with Jamie Moyer, who was a pitcher for at the time for the Cubs. And uh, he had gotten Jamie Moyer to send me a whole bunch of Cubs stuff and an autographed picture. And I may even still have the Cubs hat that he sent me, um, from that. And it was cool that, you know, years later that Jamie Moyer ended up pitching for the Phillies. Again, I'm in suburban Philadelphia. So, you know, the, you know, the team that I grew up, you know, loving and, and cheering for, uh, for him to play there after I had all this cool stuff. I, unfortunately, I never got to meet him. Uh, but it was very cool. And, and looking back at the picture, the autographed picture that I also still have, uh, he, he was so young at the time. And, and obviously I was too. Uh, but it's just funny to look back and, you know, how young he was when he was, you know, when he first started uh, playing for the Cubs. So again, the video store was another big day in, in, uh, in December. And, uh, and just going back and that kind of kicked off my, you know, my adult life, my career you know, as a business owner, or whatever you want to call it, um, some say entrepreneur, I, I don't know about owning a franchise, being an entrepreneur, but I, I guess, I mean, you know, again, it was a lot of fun and it was, while it was a business and, and there were some issues, you know, both, uh, you know, both business wise and, you know, customer service wise, you always have difficult customers and, oh, I got it that way, you know, was a, <laughs> was a big thing that people said when they would come back and bring back a tape that was all mangled or, or whatever. And again, that just shows that today when you just punch in a couple of buttons through your cable or your internet uh, connection on your phone or your tablet, how much better it is now than having to go and do that. Because, you know, if I rent a movie, let's say I rent something today, that, that I, did, I can't destroy it. Unlike, you know, the videotapes back in the day uh, or the DVDs, you know, with maybe just one little nick in it that, you know, makes it skip half the, half the movie. So, um, you know, so that was a, uh, you know, a fun business, but again, it, it had its time and it's, you know, it's better now. I mean, you know, most times things get, get improved over time and, and that, you know, watching movies at home, um, that's definitely one of the things that have gotten improved. Another thing that I can add, and I don't know that this will be a good thing. We had our, um, condo elections, uh, the other day. And while my term was not up, uh, after the elections, uh, the board meets and we elect people to the different positions. And I was asked if I would take over as president. And I said I would. And so some might see that as significant. Um, one of the other board members said to me, man, I haven't seen Jim, who was the previous president. I haven't seen Jim smile so much since I've known him over the last six or eight years. And I, I think Jim was president for six years. So I, I'm, I'm kind of afraid of what I'm up for. Um, but I am the uh, president now of our, <laughs> of our condo board. So, uh, so I guess maybe one day that will be significant one way or another, maybe, maybe good, maybe bad. I don't know. We'll have to, you know, time will, will tell us about that. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of different things that happen in December. And of course, everybody's getting ready for, for Christmas and Hanukkah and, and again, being raised Jewish, uh, I always celebrated Hanukkah and I got the eight gifts, you know, one gift per night, um, which sometimes worked out better than some of my friends and, uh, they got Christmas presents, uh, other times it did not, um, because I only got one a day, obviously. And, you know, they've got however many they were getting in, in one shot. Now, like I mentioned, my mom was Catholic, so, 
uh, we had, uh, I had an aunt, her sister lived close by to us. So for Christmas Eve, I would go over there and, and that was always fun because, you know, they had the Christmas tree set up and, you know, we'd watch Christmas TV shows the night before and, uh, whatever was on. And, uh, and of course, when I grew up there, <laughs> it was before, before VCRs and, and maybe even cable was available in our area. So, so whatever we watched was on regular TV. Uh, or we played games, but you know, one, one thing that stands out because I always watch TV laying on the floor in most places so I could be closer to the TV. I just remember they always got li- a live tree and I always remember needles sticking in me from, uh, from the tree. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, I've never had a live tree because Liz, as I've mentioned is Catholic and, and we do have a Christmas tree. Actually, we have a couple, we have one in our window and we have, uh, you know, we have, we put up one, which is an artificial, both are artificial. Uh, we put one up, uh, she puts it up closer to Christmas and, um, and the kids always got Christmas gifts. They all always got Hanukkah gifts. Um, I have to say, I think both kids identify more as Jewish than, than Catholic, though neither have done anything on either side to, <laughs> other than saying I'm this or I'm that. And, um, I'll have more next week. I, I think I'm going to do a Christmas Hanukkah, um, episode next week, uh, to talk about the different things there. But I always liked, I always liked the the Christmas season for the lights and, you know, and I'll get into that next week. So I mentioned that, uh, I went to vampire weekend concert. Liz and I went, uh, it was last week on December 4th and, and I'll probably remember it for quite a while. First of all, the show was outstanding. It was one of the best concerts I've seen of the year. And thinking back, I've seen probably about a dozen shows this year. <clears throat> A couple of months I've had, I've gone to a couple shows. Um, some months it's only been one show. And, and to be honest, most of them were free thanks to Radio 104.5. And uh, because they have all these different free events, uh, they have one in January that's outdoors, which, you know, is a crapshoot in January. Some days it's been awesome in the 50s and sometimes 60s. And there's been other times where um, it's so cold that at one show a few years ago, uh, the guitarist and lead singer from the one band called, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember the name now. Uh, anyway, it's a local, it's a local Philly band that had, uh, had a song that was fairly significant. It got play on obviously on radio 104.5, but also on alt nation on, on Sirius XM. And, uh, <laughs> after one of the, after one of the songs was over, he says, oh my God, I can't feel my fingers. And uh, like I said, he was also playing guitar besides singing and, and it was funny. So that was, you know, that kicks off the year and then they have all sorts of summer shows and, and things like that. So, um, again, I I think I've only paid for two shows all year, two or three shows. Jane paid for one when, when Jane and I saw a concert back in, uh, October, uh, Missy O and Youngblood, Jane had bought that ticket and, uh, unfortunately only bought two. She, you know, if she had bought three, Liz would have been able to go. And, um, you know, that was something that, you know, Liz loves Missy Owen and, and it would have been great for her to go, but she didn't. And, you know, so hopefully we'll catch Missy O somewhere along the way. But this Vampire Weekend show was a very small event, um, even though they're not a insignificant bands, like most of the bands that I like are, are usually on the small side. Yes, I'm talking about 888, which not even <laughs> nobody even mentions anymore. Uh, I still love them, and I hope I see them again live. Um, or as as Jacob said to me, you know, if you don't want to say you want to see them live, maybe you can say you want to experience them. Uh, because in reality, I really am not going to see them. Um, although, at Vampire Weekend, um, because it was such a small show and because we got there so early and by so early, I think we were there with the, the opening act who was also very cool. And I, I can't remember his name. He was, he was this guy that played this, um, electric violin that, um, he then would do these loops. He would play different instruments and lay down a loop and, and all on his own while, you know, he's t- stepping on foot pedals and, you know, you know, making adjustments and everything and then do a whole song and it, he would build up and basically build each track, whether it's, um, you know, percussion or guitar, or like I said, he did the violin. Sometimes he'd do the violin in lieu of actually singing. Um, and he actually could sing too. So that was kind of cool too. So, you know, everything he did, I couldn't do, including singing and don't, don't ask me to sing. Although if you have a birthday and you want Liz and I to sing you happy birthday, we'll, <laughs> we'll certainly call and do that. Um, but we got there so early that we were probably, 
I don't know, maybe 10 feet from the stage. So when Vampire Weekend did come out, you know, they were so close that while I couldn't make out what the people looked like, and and in reality, you know, even when I'm standing face to face with somebody, I, I really can't tell what you look like. Um, I could see, you know, when somebody was playing the guitar, I could maybe see their arm moving or the guitar moving a little bit. So I could see that that person was playing if I only heard one guitar. Um, the drummer was in back. I couldn't couldn't see them. Uh, but we were so close and it was just an outstanding show. Uh, but the show was actually, it, it was a fundraiser for uh, the Movember Foundation. <clears throat> And what Movember is, it's it's a thing for men's health. It is a fundraising event um, that each November you're supposed to grow a mustache and, you know, all sorts of crazy. I, I always liked it growing, you know, just, <laughs> just not shaving, basically. Um, and in fact, that last October, meaning October of 2018, I had shaved and then I've had a beard ever since. Um, so it, it's the longest stretch. I, I, I mean, I think the longest I'd ever gone before this was maybe a month or two um, with a full beard. And um, for me, it's just easier as far as the shaving bit goes. It's just easier maintaining a beard with, you know, just shaving my neck up to the, you know, up to my jawline. Um because it's, you know, I don't have to, you know, when I would shave, I, I never felt comfortable completely shaving uh, when I would shave my whole face because I'd, I'd always miss a spot. And, you know, it, it looks dumb. I, again, I can't see it, but when I wash my face after I shave, I know, oh my gosh, I missed that. I use an electric razor and by then, you know, to go back, it hurts. So I have to wait that until that night and I would go back and I, I just don't, I just didn't like it with a, with a full beard other than on my neck, you know, so I'd shave my neck and especially in the winter, you know, I wear a turtleneck most of the time. So even if I miss a spot there, uh, it's not as noticeable. Uh, so the Movember foundation each, each November, uh, raises money and they have this Movember gala that radio one Oh four five is, uh, they call themselves a team and you donate money to that. And when you donate money to that, you get an invite to this concert. And it's more than just a concert. Again, it's called the Movember Gala featuring whoever, whatever band is playing. And uh, this year it was at Parks Casino, like I said. And um, it's awesome because they go around with appetizers and um, you get a, a uh, I think this year it was just beer. I don't think it was other drinks. Some years it's been more than beer, uh, I believe. And don't quote me on that. I'm not 100%. Uh, but this year it was beer. Liz and I don't drink, so it wasn't a big deal. Uh, we gave the tickets away. Um, I should say Liv, Liz gave them away, uh, you know, before things got too packed. Uh, and when I say packed, there was maybe 500 people there, give or take. And uh, again, it was just so awesome being so close and interacting with the band. And um, I, I want to say the band played maybe 12 or 13 songs. They were only originally supposed to play for 45 minutes. And they ended up playing longer because they were a little nervous because they said that they, they, they were asked to do an acoustic set. And it turned out to be partially acoustic, not fully acoustic, but it was just outstanding. And I can't wait to see them uh, at a regular show just to see how it's different and, um, and, and just to, just to, and, and just so many more people, obviously, you know, um, as a few people said, they were headlining, uh, festivals in Europe, uh, over the summer. Um, so to come and see them in a, at a, in a small, uh, with a small crowd, just, it was just so cool and so outstanding. But the funny story was, you know, we're standing there and it was in between the opening act and, and vampire weekend and they're going over how much money they raised. And it was around 25 grand, um, for the Mo Movember foundation, which is very cool. And, um, you know, and they're talking about silencing your cell phone. Well, you know, you know, a lot of people through the show, including this girl that was next to me and that I, I ended up talking to a little bit, and I'll tell you more about her in a sec. Um, most of the people, you know, if you're sighted, you you may be listening to the music, but you know, you may be, you know, on Instagram or Twitter or responding to an email or whatever. And of course I can't do that. First of all, I can't do that at a concert because, you know, I have to listen and I, there's no way I'd be able to hear and it'd be pointless to go to the concert and then, um, you know, and then try to, and try to do something on my phone. 
and and that's why uh, I have one win in my fantasy football league. And and still this weekend I came very close, but didn't win. Um, so, uh, you know, you know when they say, you know, I said to Liz, oh, I say, they, I said, man, if I silence my cell phone, that means you know, you know I might as well shut it off because you know I I can't see it, so I can't use it. And the girl standing to my left, you know, started laughing and she's like, oh, that's, yeah, that, that makes sense. And, and, you know, I said, what a great tool the iPhone is. And, you know, so we started talking about that and she said, I'm an optometrist. And some of the things that when I was being trained, um, uh, I did, I, and I don't remember how long she said, uh, a, a term of doing low vision and low vision is even though um, I'm legally blind, um, you know, somewhere in the 2300 range, give or take, uh, depending on the day, depending on the conditions and the wind and the sun and the planet's alignment. Um, you know, some days it's better than others, just like, you know, if you've got any kind of issue, you know, there are some days that are better, better than others. Same thing with my psoriatic arthritis. Some days I feel great. And when I say great, not, not that great, but, you know, it's just a dull, you know, discomfort. In other days, you know, if I move, if I breathe, you know, it hurts. Um, so she was talking about all these different tools between magnifiers and screen readers and um, things that help you weigh stuff and alarm clocks that, you know, talk to you and, and all sorts of different devices that now all come right in the palm of your hand or in your pocket in this instance that help someone who is blind or visually impaired, you know, get through a day. For example, when I, when I go into the mail room at my building here, um, you know, I have to scan the packages and, you know, I, I take out my phone and I use that, that app called seeing AI by Microsoft. And I actually have a, a shortcut that I just say, Hey Siri, what does this say? And then what it'll do, and she may start talking now, um, it will open up seeing AI and, and then I just, you know, go to the packages and I just hold it around, you know, where I see the, you know, I can see the, uh, the label, the shipping label. I don't know if it's right side up. And, and I believe that seeing AI will, will read it no matter what. Um, it will, you know, whether it's, I'm, I'm holding it sideways or, um, you know, and I just listen for, for my name or, or the person's name who it's delivered to. And, you know, if I don't hear my name or if I hear the apartment number that's not ours, you know, I move on. Um, obviously, at this time of year, it's difficult because, you know, our, our mailroom gets bombarded with packages from Amazon, Kohl's, wherever. Um, so I can't, uh, you know, it's hard to do, you know, but like at the end of the day, like, you know, right now, I, I, Liz and I didn't go down. So maybe after I get done recording this, um, which it's, you know, probably about 1115 at night. Um, I will go down there and scan the packages to see if there's anything for us. Uh, and sometimes I know stuff is coming and other times, you know, I don't. And, um, you know, especially when I know, uh, something's coming, you know, then I'll look out for it. But when I don't, I don't, you know, I don't scan all the time. Uh, so it just like, you know, you say, okay, well, geez, that iPhone is so expensive. It's, you know, 750, 1,000, 1,100, whatever it is, it's still significantly cheaper than going and buying all the different things. Um, you know, I can read books on it um, uh, through the National Library Service, which is, you know, for blind and visually impaired uh, folks. Um, you know, it's basically like audio books that, uh, you know, that I, that I can grab and listen to and uh, take back. Um, you know, again, the screen reader, the, uh, you know, things like seeing AI and other magnifiers, uh, there's currency readers, um, and, and seeing AI does that as well. Seeing AI does, has a few things, uh, it can read whole documents and, and that's what I use. Like when I'm at a condo board meeting, that's what I would use to read the agenda or to read the minutes to go over them, to approve them or not approve them or whatever, or change them. And you know, so when you think, okay, wow, I'm spending 750 or a thousand bucks on a phone. It's more than that for someone who is blind or visually impaired. And it's funny of all places going to this concert, you know, talking to this girl and, you know, because, you know, there were, you know, quite a few people there again, give or take 500 
Liz was on my right side. This girl who was the optometrist is on my left. So uh, after the show was over, I, I said to Liz, I said, did you hear what I was talking about with that girl? And she's like, no, what? And I said, she, <laughs> she's an optometrist. And we were talking about um, the iPhone and, you know, all the different benefits of it um, and how great of a tool it is uh, for folks that, uh, you know, that are visually impaired or blind. Uh, another thing that I love with it and, you know, again, completely blind person is not going to get as much out of it. Uh, for example, I might want to know, geez, I wonder what that looks like. You know, this is what, you know, I sometimes look at something and I have no idea what it is. So maybe I'll snap a picture of it and then I'll take it back and I'll look at it on my computer where it's, you know, I have a 27 inch screen. So I look at it, I can zoom in and, and see what I'm looking at sometimes. Uh, and, and again, there are times that I'll look at a picture. I have no idea what I'm looking at, you know, especially on, on, uh, Instagram or Facebook. And, uh, it's just, you know, it's just outstanding. Like, Oh, I did. So wow. I saw that today. Or if I'm like when I was at the pen museum a few weeks ago and I took a picture of, of a mask because it was saying that this is the, the signature thing that's seen on commercials, you know, for the pen museum, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Oh, but maybe I should take a picture of that and see if I could see it. Um, when I get home now, it turned out that, you know, it was a, it was a mask that was, I guess it was wood or stone. I'm not quite sure pottery or whatever, but it was dark and it was so dark that I couldn't make out the features. Kind of like, uh, <laughs> kind of like, uh, it's over, uh, my sister-in-law's, uh, and they got a new dog that they're going to use as a service animal. And it's a black lab. Well, when I look at that, it's like looking at a stuffed animal because I just see dark, you know, I couldn't really make out like when, when the dog was, you know, had his mouth open, um, you know, he would, he would, you know, I, maybe I could see, you know, his teeth, you know, the white of his teeth a little bit, but I couldn't see his eyes. I couldn't see anything about him. And I, I just thought it was, I thought it was a little, I don't want to say creepy, but it was, it was different because, you know, it just looked like, you know, a giant dark blob and, um, you know, it was just kind of funny. Um, but again, vampire weekend was just so great. And, um, you know, and then to top it off, to talk with this girl, you know, of all, of all places to go and, uh, and, and talk about this stuff, it was just kind of funny. And, uh, you know, it kind of, uh, filled the time between the opening act and the, uh, you know, and, and vampire weekend, which again, I just can't tell you enough how awesome they were. And, um, you know, both interacting with us and, and just the sound, the sound was just great. Um, so if you get a chance, uh, Vampire Weekend, um, check them out. And, uh, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, and I look forward to, like I said, to, to going to see them again uh, in a regular concert setting. And it will be, um, I'm sure, just as good. And, you know, and, uh, you know, like I said before, I love going to concerts. I think Liz does as well. So, uh, so that is something that we look forward to doing again. Uh, so that is it for episode 52. And again, I really appreciate you. Now I've got 52 episodes. So that's one a week. Like I had mentioned last week, I did miss a week uh, last year uh, in February or March. I don't remember what the reasoning was, but I did miss. So I've got 52 episodes, one full year of uh, podcasts, and I hope you've enjoyed them. Um, and, you know, any kind of feedback, I really appreciate it. Um, area code six, four, six, nine, two, six, six, three, five, zero. You can leave a message, um, good or bad, you know, I'm okay with it. You know, please, you know, I'd like to know what could I do better? What could I do? Not at all anymore. <laughs> Should I stop talking? Um, because, uh, you know, I would like to know, um, what improvements I could make. I'd also like any kind of ideas you have for upcoming shows. Uh, I'd be happy to answer questions. I know I got an email from my friend Alex this week who had sent me an article about uh, visually impaired folks in the UK getting ready to vote and how they're mostly going to be disenfranchised because there are really no voting machines that can accommodate a blind or visually impaired person. So uh, you got to hope that uh, the person that you're with is of the same ideology and the same has the same ideas for for leadership in that instance now as i've mentioned before i've gone with liz and you know we're you know we're identical when it comes to our ideology and who we want and um but he had sent me he said maybe this is a good podcast episode and you know 
Uh, so that is something as next year, 2020, being a, an important election, you know, general election in November, uh, the different voting machine options. And, and as I mentioned in a previous episode, uh, I did get to test out one uh, voting machine that's accessible um, to blind and visually impaired that was so easy to use. And uh, maybe I can get him on the show, the uh, the gentleman who was the rep for that company, which unfortunately they're not going to have those voting machines here. But again, any kind of uh, ideas for episodes, please let me know. And like I mentioned before, I do want to start some other podcast and I'd like to include someone else, whether it's Liz, if she has time and it's tough with her in school. Um, and we can do something that maybe I'm not as familiar with, but she is, you know, thinking, you know, her school is a Montessori school. You know, maybe we can do something educationally um, angled uh, with stuff that she knows. She teaches uh, kindergarten and uh, preschool. And it is just, <laughs> well, well, maybe I'll have her on and we could talk about that. <laughs> It is just unbelievable, and that is not something I would ever want to do is step into that classroom for more than a few minutes. Um, but please let me know. Again, uh, 646-926-6350, or I can't see you podcast at gmail.com. Remember, I can't see you is only seven letters. It sounds like more. I-C-A-N-T-C-U podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> Sorry, I had a brain freeze there. And again, I really do appreciate you listening over the last year uh, to all the episodes that you have or haven't. And I'd appreciate any feedback, rate, review, and subscribe if you haven't already. And enjoy the rest of your day and the holiday season. Thank you for listening to the I Can't See You podcast. Follow David on Twitter. He is at David Bench.